Jerry here. Um, I am your Zero Ecosystem Trainer and it is my mission to help you fast track your Zero journey. I'm also the host of the Zero Add-on Expo that's coming up in May that is uh, created to help you answer the question, which add-on do I get? Which Zero Add-on do I get? Because I answer questions all the time from people um, around the the what do I do? I have a client that needs to, that does this, that needs a system to do this, this and this, which add-on do I get? So I'm trying to help answer those questions with that. Today I've had this idea for a video in the back of my head for ages and usually I love doing the big production thingy and points and just doing the proper videos. If you've seen my YouTube channel, you can see what I do there. And I've had this idea to get out of my head some of the information and some of the lessons that I've learned about converting from MYAB to zero. And at the moment, I'm right in the middle of doing a big conversion for a family company that has four different MYAB files that I'm putting across to zero. So I'm, I'm reliving all of the MyAB to zero stuff again and, and found even some more lessons this time around. Um, so let me just, I thought, I'm just going to get the information out. You guys don't care how it comes. Um, I don't have time to do the productions. I'm too busy. So let's just get you the information you need. So some key points that I have learnt about converting from M1 to B to zero. Uh, number one, how important the conversion balance is. If you are a uh, certified zero partner, you would have learnt at the zero uh, partner certification training all about the conversion balances, what they're there for, um, how to use it uh, correctly, and the importance of the conversion balance date. Probably the biggest lesson, and this is something that I teach when I do teach the Zero Partner Certification to new Zero Advisors, is that uh, the conversion date is the date that Zero says, you told me the balances at this date are this, I'm going to ignore everything else prior to that date. I'll tell you a little story. When I discovered Zero back in 2009, I had a client that I brought onto Zero on the 1st of October 2009. And so I started Zero on the 30th of September 2009. So then I was, um, that was the date I was converting to Zero. And that was the date I thought I had to put in because that was the date I was starting Zero. So I put in my year-to-date balances, my conversion balances from the QuickBooks file, which was July, August, September. So all those three months were in my in my zero file, and that was my conversion balance at 30th of September. I then went on and set up my bank feed and used zero from the 1st of October for that client. After doing the December bass, I was like, hmm, I really like the monthly P&L that zero provides. So I want to go back and get those September numbers and put them in the July and August as well. Uh, so I did like I would normally do in MYB, I did a monthly journal the 31st of July and a monthly journal at the 31st of August to put in my, uh, my figures for the, the, the July and August. So an adjusted September with a journal so that I could, uh, show the monthly trial balance. And then I ran in the, the report after doing all of that and it wasn't working. And I didn't realize at the time that the conversion balance was just basically ignoring anything in the system prior to that conversion date. So my July balances are in there, I could see it, they were saved. Um, my August balances are in there and everything was adjusted to 30th September, but I couldn't actually see the figures uh, because when I pulled a report, it didn't show. And that's because Zero says, you told me as at 30th of September 2009, you told me in the conversion balance the screen at 30th of September 2009, this was my, my details. Uh, this was the, the balances in those accounts at that point in time. And Zero says, I'm going to ignore anything else on 30th of September 2009 or prior to that because your conversion balances were this. So how I fixed it once I worked that out, I went and converted, changed the conversion balances back to 30 June 2009 changed the conversion date back to 30 June 2009, then the manual journals that I did for July, August and September were all picked up and I got my monthly PML that I wanted. A lot of the time people start their zero file moving from MYOB and they don't think that it's that important to put back the, um, they, they don't realise the importance of doing the monthly PL and that that, that that monthly PL is not going to work unless they go back and 
and have the conversion date at the end of the financial year. So that's what I did and that's how I deal with it um, now. Now that client that I was dealing with didn't have any debtors on creditors in their QuickBooks file. So I didn't have to worry about that. So next conversions come along and I get some clients with some really big debtors and creditors. So when I did that, I did the same process, conversion balance date at the end of the previous financial year, and then monthly trial balances, and then I put in the debtors and creditors. Problem, you put in the debtors and creditors last after doing the monthly trial balance, the debtors and creditors come up in the zero file on the date the original invoice was. And that's really important to do with them at the date that the original invoice was because for GST purposes, you need to either take them up on a cash basis or on a accrual basis. And if you put them all on, say, on the 1st of October, if you're converting at that point in time, if you change all of your debtors and creditors to be the 1st of October because you think that you can't put them in prior to the conversion balance, then you will end up with uh, the incorrect GST. So the debtors and creditors have to be exactly as they were. The other reason why they need to be that is that if you need to issue a statement to your customers, you can't have your invoice date changing to the first of the next quarter when you're actually converting. It has to be the real date. So you put your debtors and creditors in first. When you put your debtors and creditors in before you do your monthly trial balance, you then do the journal entry for your monthly trial balance, but you have to factor in that Zero already has some of that information in there from the outstanding debtors and creditors. So my process for updating and converting all of my Zero files is conversion date is the end of the previous financial year. My conversion balances are either from the previous system or if they're available, they're financial statements at the end of the financial year. Secondly, I do my outstanding debtors and creditors. Thirdly, I do my monthly trial balance with all of those figures from their previous accounting system, but factoring in the details of the outstanding debtors and creditors that are already affecting those months um, that are in there. Okay, so that's lessons learned that I wanted to pass on to you. Another big lesson I learned, which usually isn't gonna be a major deal, but um, one that I've come across recently dealing with uh, someone that had really big and really detailed MYB chart of accounts, you can't import a chart of accounts greater than 700 lines, 700 accounts. So make sure if you ever have a really big chart of accounts that you uh, condense it down so it's less than 700 lines. The other thing, and I'm going to have some more videos for you coming up on the lessons that I've learnt in relation to implementations um, on a, lots of different software systems, because that's what I do. Um, it's often easy to overlook the invoice creation time, especially when you're not used to doing invoice creation a whole lot. So at the moment, I'm working on a client that has uh, customised zero invoices, but also uh, customising those zero invoices as receipts and uh, learning that, that customization process. Although I felt like I was quite good uh, at doing the customized invoices in Word, I'm struggling to get um, that happening really quickly using Zero Help Center, doing all those things. Um, but it is often takes some time. Invoice creation, uh, implementing Unleashed, they have a document designer. It takes a while to use that one. Um, I'm using Deer Inventory and they have a Word, um, Word based, similar to Zero's customized templates which is great, but again, it just takes some time. So make sure when you're dealing with your, any of your implementations that you are really clear about what that document should look like so you only have to make changes once. Um, so get their past invoice mm -hmm. and ask them from the past invoice what it is that they want to change, what they want to keep, get them to mark it up, and then do your invoice creation in your, in your files and go from there. So a couple of key points. I hope they help you. Um, don't forget that you can uh, get further lessons and information from me at any time and I have a weekly newsletter. Uh, JerryMurphy.com is where you can sign up, J-E-R-I, Murphy.com. You can sign up there for any newsletters and weekly lessons and lots of other lessons that I have for you um, and stories that I have about the lessons I've learned on my zero journey because I want to help you fast track your zero journey today. Have a great day. Bye.